most people in America have a right to be themselves. Most people in America have a right to tell people they love them. Most people in America prefer peace. Most people in America prefer justice. Most people in America know what is right versus what is wrong. Most people in America are in struggle. Everyone is sort of living paycheck to paycheck. And most people do that all the time. In life, we are looking at an educational system that has failed our children. It has failed our children because it is not producing children into the businesses and communities and manufacturing companies that are actually fielding our nation. But what I mean by fielding our nation is that our nation shops. Americans are avid shoppers, buyers, and they do it year-round. Many people might be getting into debt during a time of COVID. Other people might be closing themselves down due to COVID. A lot of people are pretending not to care about other people during COVID so they can focus primarily on their own lives. There are people that lie to people. There are solicitors that are harm people. There are technologies that Americans are not ready for. And there are people in America who like to job hunt, but there are people in America who prefer building small companies. The difference is very minor. The reality is you cannot tell the world that you're always open to new opportunities if you are not willing to revisit old ones. And here in my life, I have waited a good eight plus years for someone in my life to show up. And I'm not the kind of person that pines for someone. I'm not the kind of person who longs for someone. But I am the kind of person who sees signs for people. And I get tired of seeing the signs for a person who repeatedly fails to show up. And what enrages me the most is when I see a photograph from 2018, which was produced obviously for a scene before someone actually allowed me to ask her to marry me. But that truth is a lie, because three years after a departure in a relationship, I walked my way across the state line to do something I needed to do for me. And when I returned from that event, I got into my townhouse, I went up to my closet, and what I saw there was three years of hope, three years of prayer, three years of longing, waiting there. What I felt like before Christmas was that I needed to go and depart my closet of those gifts, those things I had set aside for young children who belonged to the one that I loved, as well as a handful of gifts that God had guided me to purchase for that woman that I love. You see, when I lost my late wife, when I lost my son, I was sort of in a loss. But three years after the loss, and three years after the loss of a really significant person in my life, I was ready to be married again. So I marched my little self across a corridor, really, a parallel, if you will, line in our community. And I drove myself to a house that I'd never been at before. I stood on the porch in the freezing rain with all the hope in the world. And my hope was the most beautiful souled girl that I'd ever met in my life, would marry me. It didn't exactly turn out the way that I'd hoped it would. I had hoped that one gift would launch an openness of heart, mind, and soul to some familiarity, some fun, some silliness, and that the love that had begun would be rekindled. And then I could deliver the other gifts I had purchased for a woman that I love and her two kids. But openly, I didn't have to do it. I didn't have to do it year after year. I didn't have to set them in the closet and hold them. But I did, with a longing and a hope. And when I did that, I did that with the hope that I could stand on that porch when she had opened a few gifts for the holidays and say, here's the big one right here. This ring right here that I've given you and all these things, is a promise ring, a pinky promise ring, perhaps, 
of me as a man telling you as a woman that I love you and I'd like to marry you as soon as whatever the fuck you're going through is over with.